I have to say my piece. Be okay with that? <laughs> so when are we going to start talking about Arteta? Like I'm in about six or seven group chats right now. And the majority of what I'm seeing is party wasn't good enough. Aubameyang missed a sitter and Ketia missed a sitter. The players are letting Arteta down, blah, blah, blah. But I'm at some, at, I don't know if people just don't, rate coaching or don't get why coaching is so important it's why they get paid so much money is because they're meant to have the team knowing what they're supposed to be doing and not only that they need to be able to motivate and get that team to be able to do that on the pitch and I don't care what Arteta is teaching them in training it's not coming it's not coming out while we're playing it's just not and e either they're don't know what they're doing which is his fault or they're not doing it because they don't rate him which is still his fault so I'm not understanding why I'm not seeing some people even question him at all. He hasn't had senior player buy-in since the FA Cup. He hasn't. And no surprise, since then, Aubameyang hasn't been good. Lacazette hasn't been good. None of our senior players have played well since the FA Cup. That's a long time not to have any senior players on your side. And so for me, it's just like, yeah, I get that Thomas Party hasn't played well. Aubameyang's not playing well, but... At some point, you need to look at the sideline and try to figure out what he's doing. From minute one, we were crap. They didn't look like they knew what they were supposed to be doing after they passed the halfway line. We were passing for passing sake. Everton played a suicidal high line that we never once tried to kick over the top and run, like have Saka or Martinelli run onto it. We were passing just to pass. He doesn't like, I hate to say this, but like, I feel like I'm critically patient you know, I'm very critical, but I'm also patient. But at this point in time, I'm not seeing enough improvement where I can say that, like, we're moving in the right direction at the speed in which we should be. Because players not knowing what they're supposed to do when they get, get past halfway is a coaching issue. He's also using substitutions as a way to, like, teach players a lesson. Eddie Nketiah came on because he was showing Pepe a lesson. We need to win. Put your shit to the side for like one minute and put in a player that can actually do something. Like, I don't get it. Like, are people not watching the game? Do they not know how influential a manager can be? We've played two games in a row where the players look like they have no clue what they're doing. That is coaching 101. If you've ever played a sport, you know how important your coach is. And it's not to say that Arteta like doesn't have the best intentions. I'm just saying two years into a job that he's never done before, is it out of the realm of possibility that he's just not good at his job and he's not improving quick enough for us to get where we want to go? I get that we're in seventh and we're one point behind people and all of that. But by the time we get to January, it'll be, we're only four points off of the top six. We're only six points off of the top six. It's a slippery slope. And I don't know how anybody can look at what we've seen and say that, we just have all crap players. I guarantee another manager comes in and in two weeks you see some sort of improvement. Because guess what? Every other team that has sacked their manager in this season and last season saw instant improvement in the first one to two games that they have played. And we are still trying to figure out how good we have become by looking at underlying statistics and piecing things together. It's not that difficult. Moyes came in maybe a week after Arteta came in. Do you think West Ham fans are trying to figure out if they've improved or not? Like he's improved things around the ground and a lot of soft factory stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, I just feel like we're looking at somebody who is drowning. It wasn't really that obvious in the beginning, but he's played a couple of couple of tough fixtures. And I told you, Terry, didn't I tell you like I told you before the game that I didn't think that we would win? Because yeah, I, I know you, what the, you, you the mindset is not there. Your mindset comes from the coach. Like, it just does. And this, That's this is, fundamental. This is the thing, right? I, I'll be really blunt about this. I've been saying this for weeks to Arsenal fans. There, are, there, are, there is a plethora of what I call toxic, positively toxic people who have been talking about things in non-football terms, data points that no real football fans care about, papering over cracks, attacking any Arsenal fan who dare challenge anything that they're saying or dare say, mm, can we criticize Arteta just a little bit? I saw this come to a head 
the in the in the in the weekend that you got beat by Liverpool. That was when it came out in for, like in in its droves. When in the week, week building up to that, these people, and I'm talking across multiple platforms on Twitter, journalists included, this is going to be the moment you will see us. Essentially, was the overarching theme. Then when you lost, it was like free hit. They weren't the words used by everybody, but essentially it boils down to free hit. Then in the build-up to the Man United game, it was, this game doesn't really matter. It's all about what we kind of do, like, after it. It's not about beating these teams. It's about the next. Everybody else is sitting there and saying, yeah, but your performances are, are what is going to give you the foundation to be able to progress and move on. Two games later, I'm now seeing more people suddenly start to say, maybe we do have to speak about Arteta, or some still saying to toxically positive and speaking about the players, the players, the players. Yeah, some players missed some big chances tonight. What is Eddie, Eddie Nketia still doing on the pitch for Arsenal? He is not Premier League standard. What well, we they... didn't play from minute one. I think that's my thing. No, no, it's like and, they, and they that's focused that's on the true. chances. We were and shit from minute and one. That's, and that's also true. That you, you're a team that sat behind the ball at one nil, invited pressure on, and then you expect these players to be able to, at the flick of a switch, turn it on and come back and and equalize or win games. It's ridiculous. You should have been putting your foot on their neck when it was one nil. They're vulnerable. Their second worst run of home form in over 130 years, and he doesn't want to do it. I'm just. I, I look at it this way. I don't want any club to fail as a, as a as a general rule. Like as a rival, you kind of want people to fail and, and lose at times. What's been very frustrating in the last few weeks is seeing all these Arsenal fans pretend they're being positive, pretend they're happy with our Twitter, and they're still going to do it. And I don't know whether it's because they don't ever they don't want to appear like AFTV. They don't even want to say one same similar thing to to someone like someone as Lee Gunner. But they've got to wake up and smell the coffee. Mikel Arteta is drowning. Have there been improvements on last year? Yeah, this time last year, he lost eight games. But he lost six this year. Six defeats in 15 games isn't good enough for a club that in the last five years on salaries and, and wages has spent, what, one and a half, two billion quid? Like, it's it's ridiculous. In the You can't be spending that kind of money over a five, six-year period, probably more like, more, more like five or six years, and expect it. You know, it's absolutely atrocious. It really is. And I feel sorry for people like you. I feel sorry for people um, like Kesh, like Adam Charles. I like level-headed with this. But yet they get dragged into these groups of these overly toxic, positive gooners of recent weeks. They're, they're a disgrace. They're a, they really are. It's, Even more of a disgrace just, than Arteta, in my opinion. It's just frustrating because I look at those those group chats and I see so much... The I saw the players are letting Arteta down and it just infuriated me. I'm like, Arteta is drowning because he can't make the right decisions at the right moments because he doesn't know what he's doing because he's never done this before. It's not out of the realm of possibility that he's just not good. I, I'm sorry. And there's a reason why he doesn't have senior player buy-in. Aubameyang may not be who he used to be, but he's played under Klopp and Tuchel. You know, Thomas Partey's played under Simeone. Even Pepe's played under good, a good manager in um, I forget, Gautier. Do you really think they just are crap players or do you think that maybe they're looking at what he's doing and saying, um, actually, this doesn't feel right. And that's why he has to have all young players because those are the only players that he can influence, but they need a strong personality. Like, I don't think Arteta has a strong personality. I think when things start to unravel during the game, which happened right away, he just doesn't know how to get a grip over things. And that's not to say he's a bad person, but I'm seeing people say, I don't know where we go from here because there's no good managers available. Please stop kidding yourself for like five minutes. Anybody who's done the job before might be able to get a tune out of this group. So uh, that's all I'm saying. Like, you're, you're, that's you're, it. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. And look, look what Man United have just gone and done. If you can't find the permanent guy, go and get an interim. And not being funny, it's all about levels as well. You can easily get Graham Potter, your Arsenal football club. He is a he's light years in front of Mikel Arteta. There are, there are a plethora of managers out there, if you know where you're looking, who can develop this young squad, coach this young squad, get on better with the senior players, and yield the right results. I mean, Rafa Benitez, he's better than Mikel Arteta. He is. And at the end of the day, I think these gooners are just... What you find is they're sticking their heels in the ground because they've gone out on a limb on social media and they just don't want to admit 
that they were wrong. And it becomes more of a fight between content creators than it does them giving their true and their honest opinions. And it's, it's embarrassing to see from some of these. Some of these are verified blue tick journalists, pathetic little creatures. That's all they are. And then if anyone says anything, they come for them in their little groups. Pathetic little clowns. That's what they are, all of them. Um, from, you, from your point of view now, though, I know you said you were going to kind of wait until at the end of the season where you end up, but are you just at a point now where you think maybe you're not going to call Arteta to be sacked, but do you feel as though it may just be time? Would you like to see it happen now? Or is it just a case of wait until the end of the season as far as you're concerned? I mean, I'd always welcome a better manager. Like that's, that's my thing. I, I care about having the best possible manager that we can have and Arsenal deserve to have a top manager. So for me, I, I get that the club is not going to, they're not going to do it now. You know, but would I welcome somebody right now? Absolutely. I think that, you know, if we're in January, if we're or December, January ish time, we fall away even four points beyond. Like if we lose to Southampton, because three losses on the, on, on the bounce is crisis and don't get it twisted. It is. It's crisis. So if he loses one more game, two more games, we're somewhere and this is slippery slope. We could easily be in 10th place, you know, in the next couple of games, if we lose them, he has to go. Like for me, it's just, it's not that deep. It's not about being toxic or not in the, in the grand scheme of things. Like this team is good. And I'm just tired of hearing our players are all crap. They're not crap. Arteta's not a great manager. Who do you think's better at their job? A bombing Thomas party and Nicola Pepe or Arteta. Who's been doing their job longer. Who's most likely to not be good at their job. Like, it's not that it's not that difficult. And I just feel we're getting stuck in this whole I want to be right thing. And I, I said this originally and all of this. I'm very I'm patient. I wanted to give Arteta at least enough time to get his players because I didn't rate the players that he had before. But I look at the players that he have now and I'm just thinking to myself, why is it that they look so good before they came to Arsenal? But now that they're here, they look crap. It's probably because the manager's not getting the most out of them. Uh, and, I, and I agree with you. Look, and as I say, we all have opinions. We all think we're right at certain times. The Arsenal fan base has got to have a look at itself here and it's just got to go, Do you know, what? if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I've got to admit I was wrong. And, and what I saw actually was before the Tottenham game, a lot of these Arsenal fans admit they were wrong. And then you beat Tottenham well and there was this quick snap, you change. And it, it, I don't even mind people changing their opinion, but it's the way I've seen them go after Arsenal fans I know and respect very, very, in, in a very cruel way. Um, and no, I'm not talking about Lee Gunner because he could handle it. Others, smaller content creators, people just on the way up doing what they're doing. And it's, it's, it's really frustrating the living daylights out of me, what they've done. It really, really has. Look, Jess, I know you've got to go. I appreciate you coming on and having your say. Thank you very, very much. And we'll speak soon. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and share. If you want to see the rest of this video or more content from the Football Terrace, please click on the link, check out our YouTube channel, and make sure you're subscribing. We look forward to seeing more of you. Take care, goodbye, and God bless.